we are back with our trusty Amstrad PPC 640 and today we are going to expand it. So let's do it. Now the PPC 640 comes without any expansion at all, at least internally. Well there is a hole for the modem under this cover and we have taken that out and filled it with the driver for our screen display which is an RGB to HDMI but you can't put any expansion cards in it no ISA slot anything like that however we have got two connectors on the back which are like big um, D things and these actually are an ISA bus and I have got some PCBs from our sponsors PCBWay and we're going to build one of these and what this does is it provides us with three ISA slots so we can plug in a card or two cards or three cards one of which will be a hard drive one of which could be a sound card and one could be something else and that is going to let us expand this machine so what is an ISA slot? Well, I'm glad you asked. ISA stands for International Standard Architecture. It's actually a backronym. The slot existed before the name did. And the slot was invented by IBM for the original IBM PC. And basically it is the 8086 bus pulled out to a slot, essentially. It's got a number of interrupts and they called it, not surprisingly, the PC bus. And it became popular. And then they brought out a 16-bit version of it for the 286. And they called that the 80 bus, not surprisingly. And it was successful. And then a bunch of clone makers like Dell and Compaq and so on um, came along and they said, we'd like to use this bus. But we're not going to call it the PC bus because that's too IBM. So we're going to invent a name for it and we're going to call it the ISA bus. And that's what they did. So we have an 8-bit ISA bus and we have a 16-bit ISA bus. And then there was a 32-bit version of it which was called the extended ISA bus or eISA. And then we come along to PCI and all the sort of proliferation of other stuff. Today we're going to look at this and we are going to build up an ISA bus expansion and then we will be able to plug in ISA cards 8-bit because this is an 8-bit machine. It's got a V30 in it which is um, a clone of the 8086. So let's do that. So how do we get to here? Well, we start with the website, and this comes from www.enide.net, E-N-I-D-E, -E, and the project is by a Portuguese guy called Joe, or Jao. I apologize for mangling that. And he started this project in 2016, um, dropped it, and then came back to it 2021. And this is the 2.1 revision from 2022. So on his website we have got the schematic and we have got the bomb and we have got the Gerber files and a bunch of project photographs and some down the bottom. We have some references and interesting links which I suggest you look at and follow because, well, uh, interesting links and so interesting and there's a couple of YouTube videos that will showcase this card so we download the Gerber files and then we upload them to our wonderful sponsors PCB way and from there we can just simply pick the color and of course we are going to go with yellow and that's it we order the boards and there are 10 boards and a week or so later, actually 10 days because it's China Post, and um, here they are. I will give China Post a bit of a shout out. The shipping service is excellent. 
they are very well packed they are much better packed than if you get DHL or FedEx um, DHL and FedEx seem to treat them like footballs they kick them around and they're battered and um, you know you are glad that there's a lot of foam inside the box the China Post packaging comes it's nicely shrink wrapped it's absolutely pristine so here we are let's open them up and have a look at the boards right there we go give it a good rip okay so top board here we go it's a nice double-sided board designed in Portugal April 2022 and basically it takes the 8086 bus from the back of the Amstrad via these two connectors and edge connector stuff. So the bomb is on the website. It's not a lot to it. It's all through hole melted and by the power of magic here it is. So we've got two 74HC244s, these are buffers and sockets for them. We've got our two D connectors, these are just going to go onto here like that and they fit quite nicely. 1.6mm thick PCB is ideal for that. Then we have our three ISA slots, a couple of decoupling capacitors for the chips and the decoupling capacitors for the voltage rails. So we've got basically plus 5, minus 5 and plus 12. So it should, oh and there is a um, pull up resistor pack, 10k, there. that pulls up the data line. This these chips buffer the address bus and some of the other signals and yeah that's about it so shall we put it together anyway, so now let's build it up there's not a lot of components to build as you can see we just have the headers capacitors a resistor network and a couple of chips and the connectors so we're going to start with the sockets. These are the lowest, these form factors. And then we'll solder one on each corner. bit to go in is the two coupling capacitors. So this wants to go, that's the common which is the part with the dot on it, so that's going to be that end. So the filled bar is the negative side, which is the short lead and the minus sign on the cap.
Okay. Now we're going to put these on. Okay, so it's just these connectors to go now. These are all the same orientation. It doesn't matter which way around they go. So the board's all cleaned up and it's been through the ultrasonic and it's all tickety-boo. Now while I was doing that I did take the opportunity to build a second one. If you are planning on building one of these yourself then I will suggest you actually put these connectors on first because I discovered that getting in there with a the soldering iron is a little bit fraught with those sockets but if you put those on first then putting the sockets in and everything else is not actually a problem that doesn't hinder it so that's a tip last thing to do is put the chips in i have the chips here So the plan is to put a XT to IDE card in here, which I need to build. So that is going to be the next build video for this project. But we can at least try it in the Amstrad and see if it still boots. So let's do that. And there we go. Now there's one last thing that we have not done and that is to put some feet in here or some off standoffs in here so that it is not going to impact the thing and we couldn't really do that until we'd measured it up twenty four and a half so that's going to be about twenty two about 22 give or take with um, a 1.6 millimeter thick board and it's just 22 plus um, a screw or even 20 millimeters plus a screw should do the trick so i've just got a 12 millimeter and a 10 millimeter and join them together with a nut on the top And that's pretty close. Okay, so let us just plug it in and see if the machine still boots. Okay, here we go. And that's a no. I did try the other one and it is exactly the same. So let us just measure some voltages. So set the meter to volts. Switch it on. Let's just go across the rails. 11.09, 4.89. These are all going to read positive 4.9 because I've got the negative onto the negative side of the capacitor. 4.9, 11.3, 11.3. So we've got 5 volt rails and we've got 12 volt rails. But we got nothing. There's not a lot we can pull out. But let's pull out these chips just to see if that makes a difference 
Okay, so same test without the chips in. Ah, oh, no, that's booting. Okay, so what does that tell us? With these bus buffers in, they doesn't work. With the bus buffers out, it does. Let's just have a double check. Pin one, pin one, 74HC244. Very definitely says that. Pin one, pin one. <coughs> ah. So that is it, 74 LVC245. That ain't the right chip. This is me being a total silly and getting the chips out of the wrong bag. 244, 245. Idiot. Right. Normal service will be resumed very shortly. Okay, so this time we have definitely got 74HC244. And they can go in. Do the other one at the same time. I clearly bought those other chips for some other project and forgot. That's sort of what happens when you buy things far enough in advance and you get as old as me. Right, so that is in. Let's see what happens. Yes, it's booting. 1430, 11th of May. That gives you a clue of the date. Excellent. So as I said, I don't have the hard drive card that I want to put in there. Another possibility for a card is a sound card. But what I do have is this, whoops. But what I do have is this um, post card, which basically gives you the postcodes and some flashing lights and stuff. And we can just run that and see what it does. So if you've got this far, thank you so much for watching, please like and subscribe and check out my patreon if that kind of um, floats your boat but you know like and subscribe and do all those things if you want because that really does help the channel and patreon helps me okay oh that's exciting So thanks for watching and we will build the hard drive card XT to ITE, IDE, I believe it's called, next time. So it's a compact flash. We'll see you then. See ya. Bye.